guys! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So our topic for today will be all about bonds payable. So we'll start by defining what is a bond. So bond is a formal unconditional promise made under seal to pay a specified sum of money. Ibig sabihin, if we have to pay a specified sum of money here, bonds payable now is actually a liability. Again, this is a liability. Ah. At a determinable future date, ibig sabihin, dapat naka-fix yung date kung kailan tayo magbabayad. Ibig sabihin, there is a maturity date here. So, kapag walang maturity date, normally that is not a bond. Maluanag ba? And to make periodic interest payment at a stated rate, ibig sabihin, ang bond, always siyang what? Always po siyang interest bearing. Not unlike a notes payable, si to it, na ang notes payable, pwede siyang interest bearing, pwede siyang non-interest bearing. Pero ang bonds, si to it, that it is actually an interest bearing liability. Maluanag ba? Until the principal sum, is paid. So, we have to pay periodic interest and see to it that that periodic interest is based on the stated rate. Ibig sabihin, always ang interest payment dito, once again, yung interest paid natin or yung interest payment always nakabase siya saan? Always po yung nakabase sa stated rate or yung tinatawag natin na nominal rate. That is why later, don't get it wrong, no? interest paid right, is not the same dun sa tinatawag natin na interest expense. So, ulitin ko lang, no? Bond is a formal and conditional promise made under seal to pay a specified sum of money at a determinable future date and to make periodic interest payment at a stated rate until the principal sum is paid. Worded in another way, bond is actually what? Is actually a contract of debt. Ibig sabihin, isa po itong liability as I said a while ago. Whereby, one party called the issuer, no? Sino tong issuer na to? Tinatawag din siyang seller, no? Because dito, tayo ang nagbebenta ng bonds, no? So, itong seller na to or itong issuer na to, meron po tayong liability. Sir, bakit po? Because we issued a bonds and we received what? We received cash. Wala nag ba? So, nakareceive po tayo ng cash. Kanino pa? Kanino, kanino nang galing yung cash? Nang galing yung cash dun sa purchaser natin ng bonds na yun or yung tinatawag natin na investor. So, ano ba? Wherein itong investor na to meron siyang asset which is yung tinatawag naman natin na investment in bonds. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? So, yung liability is yung tinatawag natin bonds payable pero yung asset, tinatawag naman natin investment in bonds because here, we paid what? We paid cash. You with me? Kaya kung maaalala mo nung nasa investment tayo, isn't it? Meron tayong dalawang klase ng investment. Meron tayong tinatawag na investment in equity securities were in here, shares ang ating binibili. Then, meron din tayong tinatawag na investment in bonds or investment in debt securities were in here, bonds ang ating binibili. So, situate na kapag bonds ang inisyo ng isang corporation, hindi po yun part ng shareholders equity. Ah. It will be part of the total liabilities because bond is a contract of debt. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Ngayon, ganito. Anong mga problema natin dito? Well, first problem natin will be about the initial measurement of the liability. Tama ba? Because halos lahat naman ng account na pinag-aaralan natin, especially dito sa FAR, no? kailangan alam mo kung ano ba yung initial measurement, then apparently later on, kailangan alam mo rin kung ano yung subsequent measurement. Isn't it? Pinag-aaralan natin yan every topic, whether inventory man yan, receivables, no pa, property plan and equipment, intangibles, etc. etc. Basta bawat account, Ang pinaka-importante right, na dapat na malaman mo is kung ano ba yung kanyang initial measurement. Ibig sabihin ng initial measurement, magkano ba natin siya i-measure on initial recognition? Maluanag ba? So, what's the initial measurement of a bond? Well, nakadepende pa yon. So, situate na meron tayong dalawang klase ng bond. No? According to paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 of IFRS number 9, bonds payable is measured in two ways, no? Depende yun if meron tayong fair value option or wala tayong fair value option. So, ano yung fair value option na yan? Well, fair value option, this is the option of the issuer to designate the bonds. Again, this is the option of the issuer to designate no the bonds at what? At fair value through profit or loss. Ibig sabihin, on the date of initial recognition, meron tayong option wherein pwede nating i-designate yung bonds at fair value through 
profit or loss. Pero, syempre, meron din naman tayong option na hindi yan piliin wherein dito, normal lang tayo sa so, dito, wala po tayong tinatawag na designation. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Sir, bakit kailangan kong malaman whether pinili natin yung fair value option or not? Well, kailangan mo yung malaman because malaki ang pinagkaiba ng dalawa. Because if pipili natin yung fair value option, see to it that the initial, no? The initial measurement will be what? Will be equal to the fair value of the bonds. Luanag ba? Where in fair value, nakadepende yan, no? It may be equal to number one, that's the cash price equivalent. Again, this will be the cash price equivalent. Sir, nang ibig sabihin yan? Well, yan lang naman yung nareceive mong pera or yan lang naman yung Ah, na-receive mong property or asset nung inisyo mo yung bonds, no? Sir, paano pag wala po yung cash price equivalent, punta ka sa number 2, which is yung tinatawag natin na quoted price. Sir, ano yung quoted price? Yan yung, well, quotation nung bonds nung binili natin. Luanag ba? Then, if wala pa din yan, situate na pupunta tayo sa number 3, which is ito naman yung normally na nangyayari, no? Wherein, fair value is treated to be the present value. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Eh, sir, papaano po pag walang fair value option? Kapag hindi natin pinili itong fair value option na to, see to it that initial measurement is actually different, no? So, sir, what will now be the initial measurement? The initial measurement now will be actually equal to fair value. Pareho lang pala, sir. Hindi pareho. Meron pa tayong dinididak dito, minus or less. Ano yung nililess natin? Less the transaction cost. Where in this transaction cost, madalas, yan yung tinatawag natin na what? Yan yung tinatawag natin na bond issue cost. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Sir, bakit naman sa fair value option walang minus, walang minus minus? Because under the fair value option, see to it that transaction cost, again under the fair value option, transaction cost are actually what? Are actually treated as an expense. So, hindi po natin sila dinididak no, sa fair value. But instead, under the fair value option, ine-expense natin yung mga bond issue cost natin. So, kapag tinanong ko ngayon, no, sa theories, on your board examination or on your examination, right, see to it that the treatment of bond issue cost is what? Is actually deducted from the fair value to compute what? To compute the initial measurement of the bonds. Luanag ba? Itong transaction cost din na to, see to it, no, na i-amortize din natin to. Once again, these transaction costs will be amortized, no, together with the premium or discount as we what as we go along through the problem because later on sa subsequent measurement nag-amortize po tayo and then tuturuan kita no kung paano mag-amortize later on pero dito po focus muna tayo syempre sa uh, initial measurement ng bonds pero gusto ko lang malaman mo as early as now na yung transaction cost po ina-amortize yan together with the premium or discount. Wherein, this premium or discount, i-introduce ko yan later. Pero if natuto ka no, sa investment in bonds, well, I believe wala ka ng problema dito. Anag ba? So ngayon, ganito. How to compute present value? Kasi kapag cash price equivalent, madali lang yan. Kapag quoted price naman, let's say may given sa problem, no? Quoted price is at 95. Ang ibig lang naman sabihin yan is actually 95% of face value. Maluanag ba? So, ganun lang kadali pag, ang pagkuha ng quoted price. So, ang problema talaga natin dito is yung present value. So, how to compute, no? The present value of the bonds. Well, si Tweet, no? If babalik tayo dun sa definition, dalawang binabayaran natin, eh. We are promising to pay a specified sum of money which is normally yung tinatawag natin na principal. At ano pa yung pangalawa? And, we are also promising to make periodic interest payment, no? So, dalawa, ang ating binabayaran dito. Binabayaran natin yung principal and then babayaran din natin yung periodic interest. Nagigets ba? Well, ganito. Paano mag-compute ng present value? Well, tingnan mo muna. If itong principal na to is to be paid at once, no? Ibig sabihin, term bonds po ang meron tayo. Sir, anong ibig sabihin ng term bonds? Ang ibig lang naman sabihin ng term bonds, minsanan ng bayaran, no? So, if, if, if minsanan ng bayaran ng principal, si tweet na ang gagamitin po natin dito will be the present value of 1. Nagigets? Ibig sabihin, if the principal is payable all at once, no? At the end of 3 years or at the end of 5 years, present value of 1 ang ating gagamitin. 
eh sir, papaano kapag yung inisyo nating bonds is actually a serial bonds? Sir, nang ibig sabihin ng serial bonds? Serial bonds, ito actually yung mga bonds na payable in installment, no? Ibig sabihin, hindi to payable all at once after 3 years, but instead, annually, nagbabayad ka dapat partially doon sa bonds na yan. Nag-gets? So, kapag serial bonds ang ating in-issue, the present value factor na gagamitin mo to compute the present value of principal will be what? Will be the present value of ordinary annuity of 1 or the present value of annuity due of 1. Sir, kailan gagamitin yung present value factor of ordinary annuity at saka yung present value factor of annuity due? Well, gagamitin mo no, si present value factor of ordinary annuity of 1 if the first payment will be what? Will be at the end, no? at the end of one period. On the other hand, gagamitin natin si present value factor of annuity due of 1 if the first payment will be on day 1. Ibig sabihin, if day 1, kailangan mo na agad magbayad, kaka, kakabenta mo pa lang nung bonds, nung kakautang mo pa lang, kailangan mo na magbayad, annuity due ang gagamitin. Nagigets? So, hindi tayo always naka-present value of 1 sa principal. Kailangan mo munang malaman if term bonds ba yan or serial bonds. Well, pagdating sa interest as we all know, periodic po yan binabayaran based on the definition. No? Sabi dito, and to make periodic interest payment as at a stated rate, ibig sabihin, every period kailangan nating magbayad ng interest. That is why pagdating sa interest, isa lang ang ating ginagamit. That is the present value factor of ordinary annuity of 1. Sir, hindi pwedeng annuity yung hindi because interest is always based on passage of time. Walang advance payment of interest. Normal yung interest, binabayaran lang yan if may lumipas ng panahon. That is why, always, no, na present value of ordinary annuity lang ang ating ginagamit dito. So, kapag alam mo na, no, yung kung, kung ano yung gagamitin mong present value factor, i-multiply mo lang yun dun sa principal or do, and doon sa interest, and then kunin mo yung sum, no? And that's already the present value. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Ngayon, ganito, no? One last thing before tayo pumunta talaga sa mga computation. So, dito, meron tayong mga interest rates na tinatawag, no? And dalawa to, kailangan dito pa lang, alam mo na yung pinagkaiba nila. Sir, ano yung dalawang yan? Una, is yung tinatawag natin na nominal rate. Again, meron po tayong tinatawag na nominal rate. And then, meron din tayong tinatawag na effective rate. So, sir, ano po yung mga yan? Well, nominal rate, tinatawag din po yan na coupon rate or the stated rate, no? Ibig sabihin, yan yung rate na napag-agreehan or agreed rate since this is the rate agreed upon, no? By the lender and the borrower. So, dyan nakabase yung what? Dyan nakabase yung interest payment. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Because yan yung napag-usapan ni lender at ni borrower. On the other hand, effective rate is actually the yield rate, also known as what? Also known as the market rate of interest. Ibig sabihin, itong effective rate na to, this is actually the realistic rate because this is the real rate of the uh, bonds. Ibig sabihin, yan talaga yung totoong interest. Eh sir, possible na hindi sila pareho? Yes, possible na hindi po pareho ang nominal rate at ang effective rate because possible na ang effective rate or yung real rate sa market is 10%, no? Pero, since kaibigan mo si lender, napakiusap mo na 8% na lang yung nominal, so possible na hindi sila pareho. Nagigets ba? Pero lagi mong tatandaan na since yung nominal rate yung agreed rate, sa nominal rate ngayon nakabase yung interest payment, pero since effective rate is the true rate or the real market rate of interest, see to it the, that in the effective rate, tayo magbibase saan? Sa computation natin later on ng interest expense. So, sir, possible na yung interest payment hindi pareho sa interest expense? Yes, that is possible. Magigets ba? Right? So, later, mas ma-appreciate mo yan no, kapag nagsusolve na tayo. So, ang gusto ko lang munang i-discuss sa inyo dito sa initial measurement is ano bang i-expect natin kapag hindi nga sila pareho. So, see to it here, na yung nominal rate possible na what? Possible na mas mataas yan sa effective rate. Or, pwede rin naman na yung nominal rate is what? Is mas mababa compared sa effective rate. So, if that's the case, anong ine-expect natin? Para lang kapag nagsusolve na tayo, Masured natin na tama yung sagot natin kasi sayang yung bawat point, sayang yung pinagpapaguran natin. Tama ba? 
So see to it that if the nominal rate is higher than the effective rate, expect that the present value, again, expect that the present value here will be higher doon sa face value natin. Nagigets ba? Sir, bakit naman ganon? Because here, see to it na mas malaki yung sinisingil na interest compared sa dapat na interest. That is why, yung present value na makukumpute natin is mas mataas doon sa face value natin. And if that's the case, see to it here na magre-recognize tayo ng what? Magre-recognize tayo ng premium. Why premium? Because mas malaki no? ang na-receive natin compared doon sa babayaran natin because face value is also known as what? This is also known as the maturity value. Right? So, itong maturity value na to, yan yung babayaran natin on the date of maturity. While present value, no, is the proceeds. Again, normally, this is the proceeds, no, from the issuance of the note. Okay? So, if mas malaki yung proceeds compared dun sa maturity value, meron tayong tatawagin na premium. We good? Now, ganito. What if the nominal rate is lower than the effective rate? Well, if that's the case, mas maliit yun na pag-usapan yung interest compared sa totoong interest. So, if that's the case, expect, no, that the present value of the note is what? Is lower than the face value. Ibig sabihin, mas maliit yung nakocompute po natin nitong present value. And if that's the case, meron naman tayong tinatawag na discount. Again, meron naman tayong tatawagin na discount. So, if the nominal rate is higher, we have a premium. Then, if the nominal rate is lower, meron naman tayong tatawagin na discount. Okay? So, to illustrate all these, no, to the problems, let's try to solve illustrative problem number one. And here, I prepared four cases. Okay? So, given the following data, determine the issue price of the bonds on January 1, 2020. No? So, phase amount of the bonds is equal to 3 million. Date of issue of bonds is on January 1, 2020. No? Nominal rate is 8%. Effective rate is 6%. So, dito pa lang, dapat alam na natin kung anong ina-expect. What do, we, what do we expect here? Is it a premium or a discount? Well, here, we expect what? We expect a premium. Sir, bakit naman? Because sabi natin dun sa last right, discussion natin kanina, if the nominal rate is higher, meron tayong premium. A nominal rate here, 8. Effective 6. So, meron tayong premium. Okay? Semi-annual interest is on June 30 and December 31. Ibig sabihin yung nominal at effective na yan. Since annual tong mga to, once again, since annual, no? Etong mga to, kailangan ngayon nating makuha yung semi-annual interest rate. Wherein the semi-annual interest rate of 8% is actually just equal to what? To 4%. And the semi-annual interest rate of 6%, obvious naman, no? Is equal to 3%. Then, date of maturity is on January 1, 2022. Ang ibig sabihin yan, if date of issuance is January 1, 2020, date of maturity is January 1, 2022, two years lang po ito. Again, this is just a period of two years. And since semi-annual tayo, si tuit na i-divide mo yan sa two, so equal yan sa what? Equal, yan, equal po yan sa four periods. Nagigets? So, ngayon ganito. Magkano nga ulit? Sa pag-compute ng present value, dalawa, no? Um, start tayo sa principal. Magkano nga ulit ang principal natin? Principal natin will be equal to 3 million pesos. Okay? So, lalagay ko dito 3 million pesos. Now, magkano yung interest paid natin? So, gaya ng napag-usapan natin kanina, interest paid, no? Interest payment is always based on the nominal rate. Okay? So, here, interest paid will be equal to 3 million times the nominal rate of 4%. Okay? Sir, hindi mo na ba yan multiply pa? sa 6 over 12, hindi na kasi yung 4%, hinati mo yun, muna yun eh. Yung 4%, naka 6 over 12 na yan. Kung gusto mong mag 6 over 12, balik ka sa 8%. No? So, here, 3 million times 4%, this is equal to 120,000. Okay? So, dito, term ban to. Minsan na ng bayaran. So, present value of 1. No? Sir, paano mag-compute ng present value factor? Balik ka doon sa ibang video natin dito sa channel na to Tinuruan kita doon kung papaano mag-compute ng present value factors and at the same time kung kailan sila ginagamit. No? So, ang title nun is Time Value of Money and Present Value Factor Computation. Okay? So, paano nga ulit? MC ka muna. MC ka muna. Right? And then, lagay mo, no? 1.03 because always sa computation ng present value factor, again, in the computation of present value factors, no? Ang always na ginagamit po natin is effective rate. Okay? So, 1.03 divided by divided by equals dapat may 1 na sa calculator mo. Then, pindutin mo yung M plus ng ilang periods. 4 periods po, ah, hindi 2 periods. So, 1, 2, 
3, 4. Present value of 1 using 4% for 4 periods is equal to 0 0.8885. Then, uh, pindutin mo yung MR. No? Pindutin mo yung MR, lalabas yung present value factor of ordinary annuity of 1, which is equal to 3 point what? This is equal to 3.7171. Very good. Now, add mo lang yung product ng dalawang yan, and that's already the what? That's already the present value. Again, that's already the present value. Anag ba? So, MC ka muna ulit, no? Para masaya tayo, no? 3 million times 0.8885 M plus mo. And then, 120,000 times point, uh, times 3.8885. 7171 M plus mo ulit. Tsaka mo pindutin yung MR, makukuha mo na agad yung sum. That's 31115522. Or pwede rin naman na kunin mo muna yung product ng 3 million times 0.8885, tas kunin mo yung product ng 120,000, tsaka ng 3.7171, tsaka mo i-add. Same lang ang makukuha mo. That's 31115522. And sabi nga natin kanina, meron tayong premium. And, napatunayan naman natin dito na may premium because the present value is higher than the phased amount. So, here, right, the issue price now of the note is equal to 3111552. So, but see to it, na itong 3111552 na to is just what? It's just an estimate because what? Because we round off, no? We round off PV factors, okay? So, asahan mo na may counting difference. Once again, the, dif the difference here is just due to the rounding off of present value factors. So, if you want to get the exact amount, don't round off present value factors, okay? Now, I do have an alternative computation here, no? Alternatively, pwede rin naman yan by what? By getting the difference between what? Between the nominal rate, again, get the difference between the nominal rate and the effective rate, no? Well, here, nominal rate, yung semi-annual na is 3, 4%. Effective rate, on the other hand, is 3%. So, their difference is 1%, no? So, yun yung gagawin nyo sa 1% na yan? Imumultiply ko po yan dito sa phased amount natin. And the phased amount is 3 million. So, ang makukuha ko dito is magkano? This is actually equal to 30,000 pesos. Then, anong gagawin next? Multiply mo yan sa present value factor of ordinary annuity of one, which is 3.7171. So, magkano makukompute mo dito? 30,000 times 3.7171. Ang makukompute mo dito will be 111,513. And since premium nga yan, dapat mas mataas, no? Again, dapat mas mataas po yung present value. So, dapat mas mataas sa 3 million ang ating makukompute. So, i-add ngayon natin yan. So, the present value using my alternative computation will be equal to 3 million plus 111,513. Or this is equal to 3 million 111,513. Once again, no? There's a difference of... Magkano yung difference? There is a difference of 39 pesos. Difference of 39 pesos due to what? Due to rounding off of present value factors. But this 39 pesos is just what? It's just insignificant. Insignificant. Okay? But see to it, no? Para wala na lang difference, don't round off present value factors. Ganun na lang yun. But for illustration purposes, I will round the... I, I will round off present value factors up to 4 lang. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa case let number 2, no? So, here in case number 2, pinagbaliktad ko lang naman yung nominal at effective. So, this time, 8% ang effective. For 6% na ang nominal. So, kung mas malaki ang effective, meron naman tayo ditong tinatawag na what? Meron tayong tinatawag na discount. So, discount naman tayo this time. Okay? Semi-annual pa rin. So, magiging 3% ang nominal and then 4% na ang effective. Okay? Then, 3 million times 3% because that's the nominal rate. The interest, no? Again, the interest payment now, every right period will be how much? 3 million times 0 0.03. That's equal to 90,000 pesos. Okay? Kailan na maturity date? January 1, 2025. So, this is a period of 5 years, no? And then, times 2. Kasi nga, semi-annual pa rin tayo. So, 10 periods po tayo dito. 10 semi-annual periods. Alamak. So, compute natin ulit yung issue price. no So, dito, in case, uh, I, I, I mean, in case number 2, compute ulit natin kung magkano bang present value ng principal at saka nung interest. So, for the principal, that's equal to 3 million pesos times the present value of 1. 
So, MC ka muna ulit, no? Kung kakalimutan yun. So, lagay mo, no? 1.04. Again, ilagay mo, no? 1.04. Then, divided by, divided by. 1.04. Divided by, divided by. Then, equals mo ulit. Then, M plus ka ng 10 beses kasi 10 periods. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, ang makukuha mo dito will be 0. 0.6756, no? Then, for the interest, that's 90,000 semi-annually, no? Then, MR ka, makukuha mo na yun. That's 8.1109, okay? Sige, isa-isahin natin para di ka malito, di ka gaya kanina. So, 3 million times 0. 0.6756. Kapag in M plus mo yan, ang lalabas is 2 million, 26,800. Then, 90,000 times 8.1109. Pag in M plus mo ulit yun or in equals, ang lalabas is 729,981. Kaso, ayoko nang gawin yun eh. Kasi kapag in M plus mo, MR mo lang lalabas na yung sum ng dalawa eh. That's 2,756,781. And that's already the issue price. So, that is case number 2. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa case number 3. Serial bonds naman to, no? Kasi dito, as you can see, phase amount is 6 million. Then, the annual installment every December 31 is 2 million. Okay? So, date of issuance is January 1, 2020. Sir, walang maturity date na given. Okay lang. Why? Because given yung annual installment payment eh. So, kung 6 million total, 2 million annually, 3 years po ito. Again, this is a period of 3 years. Okay? So, nominal rate right, is equal to 12% and then effective rate is 14. So, mas mataas ang effective. So, meron ulit tayo dito yung tinatawag na discount. So, medyo kakaiba na ang computation dito. So, ingat ka no. So, dito, alamin mo muna magkano ba yung payment natin, no? Again, magkano yung payment every December 31. So, December 31, 20, uh, 20, then 2021, then lastly, will be December 31, 2022. So, 3 years, no? Assume natin na January 1 to initio kasi sabi dito January 1, 2020. So, after 1 year, December 31, 2020 yun, no? So, every year, nagbabayad po tayo ng 2 million pesos. Once again, every year po, tayo nagbabayad ng 2 million. Okay? So, for December 31, 2020, magkano pa yung utang natin at the beginning? 6 million pa yun, 6 na, na, na milyong libong piso. Times 12%, that's the nominal rate, kasi always interest payment is based on nominal rate. So, ang interest na makukuha mo dito, again, this is the principal, then ang interest payment for the year 2020 will be equal to 720,000. That is 6 million times 12%. Okay? Ngayon, for the year 2021, since nakapagbayad ka na last year ng 2 million, 4 million na lang ang utang mo, no? So, 4 million times 12%, ang interest na lang dito will be equal to 480,000 kasi hindi ka papayag, nakabase pa rin yan sa 6 million kasi, right, nagbayad ka na ng 2 million, di ka tulad ng case 1 at case 2 na walang annual payment, kaya yung interest annually, pare-pareho lang, okay? And then, for the year 2022, since 4 million na nabayad mo, 2 million na lang ang basis ng interest. So, 2 million times 12%, this is equal to 240,000. Okay? So, total payment now, again, total payment annually is equal to 2 million, no? 720,000 for the year 2020. Magkano sa 2021? That's 2 million 480,000. Then, sa 2022, that's equal to 2 million 240 thousand pesos. Okay? So, multiply lang natin yan sa present value of 1 computation, no? For each period. So, from January 1, 2020 up to December 31, 2020, that's a period of 1 year, no? So, 1.14 always nakabase sa effective ang present value factor computation, na Divided by, divided by equals then M plus ng isang beses, lalabas yung pang 1. That is 0.8772. Isa pang equal sa alabas yung two periods kasi from January 1, 2020 up to December 31, 2021, that's a period of two, no? So, that's 0 0.7695. Then, isa pang equals or isa pang M plus, lalabas yung three periods, that's 0 0.6750, okay? Then, once again, MC ka lang ulit, no? Then, wag mo nang pahirapan pa yung sarili mo. wag mo nang i-multiply yan isa-isa kasi pwede naman tayo mag-M plus at MR to compute the present value. Nagkakaintindi yan ba? So, MC ka muna para hindi magulo. Then, lagay mo, 2,720 times 0.8772 M plus. Then, 2,480 times 0.7695 M 
m plus then 2 to 40 times 0 0.6750 m plus then MR ka, lalabas na yung total. That's 5,806,344. And as you can see, the present value computation is lower than the face amount because we are expecting a discount. Okay? So that is case number 3. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Ngayon, ganito. Is there a chance, no? Na yung initial measurement natin, again, may chance ba? na yung initial measurement natin is not equal doon sa proceeds. May chance bang ganyan? Yes, may chance na ganyan. Sir, kailan nangyayari yung chance na ganyan? If, right, the date of issuance, no? Again, if the date of issuance is not equal, no? Is not the same doon saan? The date of sale. Because possible na na-issue mo yung bonds on January 1, pero nabenta mo lang siya, no? On April 1. Diba? Anag ba yun? Right? So, sir, gawa ka nga ng timeline. Okay lang. Sige, gawa tayo ng timeline, no? So, this is January 1, which is the date of issuance. This is December 31, which is the balance sheet date. So, what if April 1 na-issue yung bonds or nabenta yung bonds, no? So, if that's the case, see to it na dapat yung initial measurement natin will be the present value on April 1. Nagigets ba? Pero, see to it, once again, initial measurement. Sulat ko lang para hindi ma lito, no? So, initial measurement will be equal to the fair value or the present value on that date, no? Siyempre, huwag mukha kalimutan minus transaction cost. Hindi ko lang muna nilalagay, okay? Pero, yung proceeds natin hindi equal sa ganyan. Sir, bakit naman? Because proceeds will be equal to fair value plus accrued interest. Hindi proceeds actually, alright? Uh, tawag dito is disbursement kasi ay, da, tama, proceeds. Tayo pala yung nagbibenta. So, total proceeds natin will be the fair value plus the accrued interest. Sir, bakit naman? Because from January 1 to April 1, meron na po tayo yung nag-accrue interest dyan, no? Again, may nag-accrue nag ng interest. So, literally, dalawa po ang binibenta natin noong April 1. Una is yung bonds. Pangalawa is yung interest. So, sir, anong gagawin dyan? Parang ang hirap naman kapag 0.75 ang i-input ko sa M+, kasi walang ganun, no? So, easy to it here na kapag ganyan yung problem, kunin mo muna yung present value. Again, kunin mo muna yung present value on January 1 at saka tayo mag-amortize once again at saka tayo mag-amortize for uh, how many months? Well, in this case, this is an amortization of 3 months, no? Once again, no? To compute the proceeds, no? To compute the proceeds, all you have to do or the present value na lang, fair value, kasi proceeds madali lang eh. Fair value on April 1, 2020, all we have to do is to compute first, no? So, step number 1 is compute mo muna yung present value or yung fair value on kailan? On January 1, 2020, para walang butal. Nagigets? Then, step number 2, no? Step number 2, amortize the bonds. Again, amortize the bonds for 3 periods. Or in 3 months, rather, okay? Kasi, 3 months nang lilipas from January 1 to April 1 eh. Diba nag ba? So, the next question here is papaano mag-compute no, ng amortization at papaano tayo mag-amortize. So, next page ako no. Well, kapag sinabi nating amortization, again, kapag sinabi nating amortization, see to it that this is the method on computing what? On computing the amortized cost. Because amortized cost, again, amortized cost is what? Is the subsequent measurement, again, this is the subsequent measurement of the bonds if hindi natin pinili, ah, once again, if hindi pinili yung fair value option because lagi mong tatandaan na possible na pinili natin yung fair value option. Eh. So, if that's the case, hindi yan yung magiging subsequent measurement. Nagigets? Pero focus lang muna ako sa wala mo ng fair value option. Okay lang ba? Para hindi magulo. Okay? So, kapag sinabi nating amortized cost, once again, that's the subsequent measurement of the bonds if we did not designate the bonds at fair value through profit or loss or we did not select the fair value option, okay? So, how to compute amortized cost or how to do this amortization? Well, isang method lang ang pinapagamit po ng IFRS 9 which is yung standard na ginagamit dito. Sir, ano yung method na yun? Yun yung tinatawag natin na effective interest method. Again, isang method lang, no? Yun yung tinatawag natin na effective interest method or the scientific method, also known as the interest method. Okay? So, wala po tayong straight line method or 
the bond outstanding method. Walang ganun guys sa IFRS, okay? Ang ginagamit lang natin will be the effective interest method. Nagigets ba? So under the effective interest method, see to it that as discussed a while ago, interest paid is not the same no? sa interest expense. So sir, papaano muna sila kinocompute? Well, interest paid, ganina pa natin yan kinocompute. This is actually equal to what? This is equal to fees amount times what? Times the nominal rate. Always yan ha? Again, fees amount times the nominal rate. Okay? While interest expense will be equal to the carrying amount at the beginning, which is the carrying amount at the end of last year, no? Times effective rate. And since magkaiba, no? Yung phase amount at yung carrying amount, see to it na magkaiba din yung compute mo dito. So the purpose actually of amortization, again, the purpose of amortization is actually what? Is actually to equate, no? On the date of maturity or on the maturity date, what? Anong ina-equate natin? Dapat on the maturity date, equal na yung phase amount at yung carrying amount. So, yan yung goal natin. Nagkakaintindi yan ba? So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, if yan ang goal natin, our amortized cost now, again, amortized cost now, will be equal to what? This will be equal to the carrying amount at the beginning plus discount amortization. Again, plus discount amortization. Sir, bakit? Because kapag may discount, carrying amount is lower. Tama ba? Present value is lower. So, since fixed na ang phase amount, kailangan natin galawin yung carrying amount. So, kapag may discount, see to it na, right? Mababa ang carrying amount. So, para mag-equal sila on the date of maturity, period by period or time by time, see to it na kailangan natin i-add yung discount amortization. Okay? On the other hand, kapag premium naman, mataas ang carrying amount, mataas yung present value. So, para mag-equal sila, on the date of maturity, kailangan pabawas ng pabawas yung carrying amount natin. Tama ba? So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, premium amortization, again, premium amortization is actually deducted. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo dan? Okay? So, kapag may premium amortization, dinideduct po natin yon. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Ngayon ang question is, paano i-compute no? yung premium or discount amortization? Well, premium and discount amortization is just the difference of what? Difference between na lang. Difference between the interest expense. Again, difference between the interest expense and interest paid. So, any difference no, between the interest expense and interest paid, right, will be the amortized cost. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? I mean, premium amortization or discount amortization. At yun yung i-add or i-minus mo sa carrying amount natin at the beginning to compute the amortized cost because amortized cost is the subsequent measurement of bonds if we did not select no, the fair value option. Okay? So ngayon, going back to kanina, sabi natin, step 1, compute mo muna yung present value on January 1 as if January 1 na issue, tsaka ka mag-amortize ng datlong buwan. Okay? So, to illustrate that one, punta tayo dito sa case number 4. Okay? So, dito sa case number 4, phase amount of the bonds is 3 million. Date of issue is a, uh, January 1. Date of sale is April 1. Nominal rate is 6%. Effective is 8%. So, yung ibig sabihin dito, meron po tayong tinatawag na discount because effective rate is higher. Okay? So, may annual pa din, ibig sabihin, hatiin mo ulit yan. So, magiging 3% lang ito. Ito naman magiging 4%. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Ngayon, ganito. From January 1, 2022, January 1, 2025, that's a period of 5 years. Times 2 kasi semi-annual. So, magiging 10 semi-annual periods po ito. Nagigets? Then lastly, right, compute muna natin yung interest paid an ah, semi-annually. No? Again, this is the interest paid semi annually kasi every 6 months po tayo nagbabayad. So, magkano to guys? This is actually equal to 3 million times the nominal rate for 6 months which is 3% or this is still equal to 90,000 pesos. Nagkakaintindihan ba? So, now, compute natin yung present value muna on January 1. No? So, this is the present value on January 1, 2020 computation. Okay? So, principal is equal to 3 million while interest is equal to 90,000. So, compute ulit natin yung present value factors. MC ka ulit sa calculator mo. Then, 1.04 divided by divided by equals. Then, ilang, ilang M plus? Sampu. So, 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's equal to 0 0.6756. Then MR ka, lalabas yung present value factor of ordinary annuity of 1, which is 8.1109, no? Then MR na lang ulit tayo, no? Para makompute yung present value kailan? On January 1, 2020. Okay? So MC ka muna ulit, no? MC, MC. So 3 million times 0 0.6756 M plus. That's 2,026,800. Then, 90,000 times 8.1109. M plus ka ulit. That's 729,981. Add mo yung dalawa or pindutin mo yung MR. Makukuha mo na yung present value which is 2,756,781. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Hopefully, nagigets mo pa ako, no? Ngayon, hindi pa po yan yung present value natin on April 1. So, to compute the present value, no? On April 1, 2020, all we have to do is to amortize the bonds for a period of 3 months. That's from January 1 to April 1. So, 3 months po ang lilipas dyan. Nagigets? So, paano nga ulit? Compute muna natin, syempre, yung interest paid or payable at yung interest expense natin for a period of 3 months lang. Nagigets? So, interest paid natin will be equal to, magkano to? This is equal to 3 million, no? Times... 3% kasi lagi naka nominal rate. Etong 3% na to good for 6 months kasi naka semi annual yan no. E 3 months lang gusto natin. So times 3 over 6, hindi 3 over 12 ha. Kung gusto mong mag 3 over 12 yan dapat 6% ang ginagamit mo. Since naka 6 over 12 na yung 6% na to, kaya natin nakuha yung 3%. See to it na yung 3% ngayon good for 6 months na lang ko. So kung 3 months lang gusto natin times 3 over 6. Then interest expense is equal to the carrying amount, syempre at the beginning, which is 2756781. Kasi sabi natin kanina, interest expense, no? Is what? Is the carrying amount at the beginning times effective rate. So, times the effective rate of 4%. And then, times 3 over 6 din. So, magkano interest payable natin? 3 million. Again, this is the interest payable, no? Or the accrued interest. So, 3 million times 3% times 3 over 6. This is equal to 45,000. While interest expense is equal to 2756781 times 4% times 3 over 12 or this is equal to 55,136. Once again, difference between the two will be the discount amortization already. Right? This is discount amortization kasi may discount tayo eh. Tama ba? Magkano discount amortization? 55136 minus 45,000 or this is equal to 10,136. Okay? So, to compute now the present value, no? again, to compute the present value, which is the initial measurement, no? again, the initial measurement of the bonds on kailan? On April 1, 2020, all you have to do is to add the carrying amount at the beginning, which is 2756781, dun sa 3 months amortization, which is 10136, because sabi natin, discount amortization is added. Pero kapag premium amortization to, minus yan, syempre. So, the initial measurement now of the bonds is equal to 10.136 plus 2,756,781 or this is equal to 2,766,917. So, that is the initial measurement of the bonds. But say to it, na kapag issue price or issuance price or sabihin na nating proceeds ang tinatanong ng problem, eh, ibang usapan naman yan. So, kapag proceeds na, no, ang tinatanong ng problem, this will be equal to the fair value nga plus the accrued interest, no? So, if the fair value on April 1 is 2766917, then the accrued interest, no, is 45,000, hindi 55, ha? Kasi 45 ang ating kailangan bayaran, eh. Okay? So, plus 45, magkano yung total na nanareceive natin? This will be equal to 2,811,917. Okay? So, don't get it wrong, please. Once again, don't get it wrong. Initial measurement or the present value in April 1 is 2766-917 while the proceeds no, on the same date is equal to 2811-917. 2811-917 yung ating na-received. Okay? So, that's all about the initial measurement of bonds. No? Nagkakaintindihan pa ba? So, let's cut first our discussion here. Hopefully, marami ka natutunan no, sa discussion natin here sa part 1. So, mamaya sa part 2, i-discuss ko yung subsequent measurement pa, amortization table, as well as yung fair value auction. 
But for now, pahinga ka muna. Pwede kang mag right ML muna one game. O kaya naman, pwede ka ring mag-Netflix muna one episode. Nagkakaintindi yan? Pero hopefully, makita pa kita mamaya sa part 2 natin about Bonds Payable. So thank you guys for supporting our channel. Keep safe and God bless. Bye-bye guys. Music